Evening everyone, uh, welcome to this live Q&A. For the next 30 minutes, I will try and answer as many of your questions as I can. For those of you who haven't joined me on one of these before, a few kind of things that just make it a lot easier for all of us. Uh, if you are writing a question down, please you just read over it before you press enter, because sometimes if there's typos or it goes over two messages, it can take a bit of a, the flow out of it while I work out what's being said. So please just do that. And please prioritize just one question because I never get around to everyone's questions. If we find we're getting towards the end and I'm running out of questions, then please do throw another one in. But otherwise, just the one question that you really want answered. And also it's worth saying this, I say this every time, but it's so important. If I don't get around to your question, then the place to go is our Facebook community. Uh, there are just over 10,000 members just the last few days. So thank you so much if you're part of the community. Really, really, really appreciate you asking questions there, but also helping out and chipping in uh, with your own sort of thoughts and things. So that is a great place to go. The short URL, becleverwithyourcash.com forward slash Facebook, sorry, forward slash community, apologies. That will take you through so you can uh, apply to join and then ask your questions. So obviously it's the Easter weekend, so it might be we don't approve your questions until uh, the next week, but I'll try and nip in over the weekend if I get a chance to uh, approve some of them. Um, and as ever, a lot of the time when I answer your questions now, I'm going to direct you to our website, becleverwithyourcash.com, because a lot of the time you ask stuff, I've already written about it, I've already done a video, I've already done a podcast, already covered in there. And so I would direct you to those things rather than go over things a lot here. If you haven't already, do sign up to our newsletter, because then you find out every single Thursday morning all that stuff we've got and maybe answer your questions before you've even asked it. But let's go. Let's start, shall we? So we've got obviously YouTube up here, Instagram over here. Uh, so let's see what's going on. So Mike says, hey, Andy, are you expecting much change in ISA interest rates between now and mid-April? So, yeah, so I've just been now updating our best buy tables over at becleverwithyourcash.com forward slash savings. And there have been a raft of easy access accounts pulled from the market. Uh, now, that could be it's a long weekend. Uh, it could be anticipation of rate changes or one person goes and the rest follow. Uh, that's normal easy access. Over in ISAs, there's a bit more competition. In fact, we're seeing more increases rather than decreases, although the big uh, Virgin one-year fix for 5.25%, that did get pulled on, on Tuesday or Wednesday. So things are going, but that's partly because it's the end of the financial year, um, partly because a lot of ISAs, particularly if you're transferring, uh, they require you to have done this, in a, not just April the 5th is the end of the financial year, but they require you to do it a couple of weeks before or a week before so they're no longer able to process them in this financial year so they just pull them from the market so that's happening then i think from the new financial year starting on april the 6th there will be a load of new rates going in and there'll be a lot of competition so there is one which we shared in the newsletter yesterday an offer for Howgreaves lansdowne which is running right now which is 25 pound bonus if you it's a lot right but if you buy a debit card you put 25 grand into uh, sorry 10 grand into a new isa and you'll get 25 pound bonus eventually from that that is just the start. I've seen other ones for stocks and shares. We will, I'm pretty confident, see more offers in the new year. But obviously, if you're thinking about the money for now, for the end of this financial year, well, then what's available is what's available. Um, but again, becleveryourcash.com forward slash savings. And we have a separate ISA Best Buy tables. That will tell you what's available for the moment. Uh, Brad says, hi. Hi, Brad. Uh, Sean says, when you have signed up to remortgage with a bank but haven't completed yet, could applications for credit cards, current accounts, switching results, in that offer be uh, resu switching results in that offer being reconsidered or rescinded? Um, I don't know for certain on that. I mean, I think if all the mortgages is, is they're happy with everything, they agree with the mortgage, it's all going, it's just about the completion, it shouldn't make a difference. But what I would say, of course, is uh, hopefully this won't happen, but you know, sometimes sales fall through if you uh, haven't yet exchanged and completed. So it might be that you think, oh, great, it's all in the bag. It's all good to go. Everything's been done and dusted. They've done the valuations. They've agreed it to happen. It just needs to transfer over. But then you apply for these things. And then you need to actually think again and look for a new property and things like that. That could have an impact. So I think for the sake of something so major, it's probably not worth faffing around because these deals do come back, the switching deals, the credit card offers. You know, if you don't need to do it right now, you know, there's a chance they might come back in a different way. They might come back with lower valuations. They might not come back at all. But ultimately, you've got to focus on those big, big things uh, over the other stuff. So let's have a quick check over on Insta. Any questions? I know on Instagram, you guys are more likely to just lurk than ask anything, um, but it's good to see you. So this is one from Josh. And Josh says, would you use Trading212 for savings? So I actually have got an article, openbecleveryourcash.com, a video over on the YouTube channel, which looks into this for about two or three weeks ago, uh, this 5.2% uh, offer they have, which is pretty much top of the table right now particularly with the rate being cut over the last few days uh, in terms of normal accounts. In terms of ISAs, Plumber offering 5.17 
uh, Moneybox 5.16, although both are limited access with bonuses. Chip is offering 5.1%. So if you're thinking about it for ISA savings, I would go with the other ones rather than trading one, two, one, two, because it is not uh, the same as a savings account. You are effectively investing very, very low risk, but effectively investing that money. So I wouldn't do that. If you want normal, uh, easy access, non-ISA savings, you might be tempted by that higher rate. But again, the, the bigger that gap is between them, the more attractive it is. But it is variable, so they might decide they want to revoke juice their rate when they don't have to be so high. But again, check out the article and check out the video, uh, either of those, for more information there. Um, Brad says, can we see more videos on the stock market? So this is something about, you know, I talk about investing on the channel in a broader context, but you know, I'm not a financial advisor. It's not my specialism. And I think it's very dangerous for people to talk about stuff when they don't know everything about it, right? If they aren't an expert in those areas. So I can tell you broad things. I could, if I wanted to, I could tell you what I do with my own money, but I don't know as much about that as I do about savings accounts, bank switching, credit cards, general money saving, getting the best for your money on bills, all those kind of things. So I don't do it and I leave that for other people. The people you're going to use there, I would just be careful. Don't just trust anyone who's talking about this stuff. But broadly speaking, if someone is saying to you, just whack it in an index fund, that's probably the best person to go with and trust their, their advice there. Where you might want to look into people a bit more detail, maybe we'll cover this at some point, is around the different platforms uh, that you can use in terms of uh, investing, in terms of, again, for those index funds, in terms of fees and so on. But broadly speaking, it's not something we specialise with. So I think it's better just to focus on the stuff that we can specialise on. But not saying don't do it. I'm just saying that's not, we're not the resource for that. It's a bit like saying, you know, if you ask me about cars, I can tell you maybe about some cars, but I'm not an expert. So why would I do that in detail? You go to someone who knows all about cars for that information. Uh, Tom says, I'm eating for my monthly interest. I think you mean waiting. Please, I know you said it, if you could just, just to do, please do, it takes so easy if you just, just check before you press enter that there haven't been any autocorrects and typos. So I'm waiting for my monthly interest for my savings before I decide to stick money in a new ISA before the new tax year. Will I be leaving it late? Um, some, as I mentioned before, some of the accounts will be pulled because, and they'll say when you go to them, they'll say, look, you must fund this account by X in order to have the money go through. Because we have got this long weekend, which basically means Tuesday, the 2nd of April, there's only Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and Friday the 5th, um, before the new financial year kicks in, that's not much time for it to happen. So I think we are maybe at that point now where uh, for this financial year, some of those things will be going. But remember, you can put money, as long as you haven't already contributed into a cash ISA this year, you can put money into an easy access one and in the new financial year, you could transfer it across. It's about getting it in there. Same with investing. You can get it in there and just have it as cash. Hold it as cash. You don't need to actually invest it just yet. It's about making sure it's in that ISA. We call it an ISA wrapper in there before the end of the financial year. Uh, so that, I think, if you're not sure about rates and things, do that. Um, at least it's there and it's protected and you might be able to get win the rates if, I can't promise they will, but if the rates do improve in the new year, new financial year, then you can like, move the money across. I remember there are the new rules that apply from uh, from the new financial year in terms of how many ISAs you can pay into. And I've got a video going live on Sunday night at 5 p.m. taking you through those new rules. So make sure if you're not busy on Easter Sunday uh, that you make a note to check out the channel and watch that. Or if you want to check out the blog, there's an article going live at the same time. Uh, Christopher says, from the 6th of April 2024, we can pay into multiple cash ISAs. Um, and from the same date, we can have multiple cash ISAs for the same place. So again, all covered in the uh, video on Thursday. Uh, so Cyril says, should I transfer my two pension pots into one? What are the benefits? So this is a really complicated one. And this is the kind of thing where you really need to get financial advice on this because there are so many things that will be unknown to us um, that could happen, that could be consequence on there. There are generally two types of pension. There's defined contribution and defined benefit. Now defined benefit's pretty rare, but this is kind of like we used to have the final salary or I got one years ago when I worked for BBC, which was career average. It was only there for a couple of years. It was not a huge amount of money, but it would kind of be uh, based on what my salary would have been in that time on average in that period. Uh, those kind of things define benefit. They're really, really good. And they generally is a bad idea to leave them and transfer them across. Unless there's hardly anything in there. But again, you absolutely want to get financial advice before you did anything with those. Then defined contribution is what most of us are on with our workplace or our SIPs, which is self-invested personal pensions. This is where we are adding money every month. Our employers are hopefully putting a bit of money in there as well. And the tax man is putting some money in as well from tax relief. And that money, um, we'll be choosing the platforms ourselves or our workplace pensions would have chosen those platforms and those funds. 
and those ones generally but not always are easier to move around but again if you did want to move them and consolidate them keep an eye on things like fees and access to stuff so it does depend on the size of the different ones as well but if they are hefty ones or if they are defined uh, benefit ones that absolutely would be getting some financial advice on that or at least doing some much more research than me just talking about it for two minutes on that uh, let's head back to insta see any more questions going on here so uh cooper uh, co-op ed up coals i always have struggled with the usernames when they're all one like that but um, is it time to ditch premium bonds so um i am planning to do next month an update on um premium bonds if you remember you might not have seen this but i did a video in october time i think it was for two friends of mine who had both had fifty thousand pounds in premium bonds and i looked at that six month rate they were happy to share with me their winnings because we were talking about it in the pub and there was a massive difference between what one one and one the other one got yet the same amount of money for the same amount of time uh so i'm looking to do an update on that if they'll give me the information an update on that uh, probably from the draw that takes place next month the april draw so that's a nice indication you get a sense of the fact and I'm spoiler for you but you know it's it's all random right <laughs> there's no, no guarantee what's happened but it'd be really interesting to see how those journeys have continued if they'll let me um those obviously the benefits of premium bonds are that uh the winnings you get are tax-free so if you are a higher rate taxpayer if you're an additional rate taxpayer I should say then premium bonds can be pretty good because otherwise you're paying 45 percent tax on all your savings if you're a higher rate taxpayer and you are earning more than 500 pounds uh, in interest every year outside of an ISA, don't forget the ISA returns are tax-free, then you'll be paying 40% tax on anything above that, and that could be interesting as well. But if you're a basic rate taxpayer, then you can earn a thousand pounds of interest, which is, you know, rates of 5%, 20 grand would do that, and we know that some people have more than that, but a lot of people have a lot less than that, so most people it's fine, plus you've got the ISA, so then you don't really need premium bonds at all. So I do think premium bonds have a place, but they are really for people who have who need a lot of cash in savings and are like to pay a lot of tax on them. But again, I'll do another update, hopefully in the middle of, or the end of next month, uh, if I can get that information. And we'll talk about that in more detail then. Uh, Adam says, hi. Uh, Tiptoe Mouse says, uh, I enjoy watching and listening to your podcast and I'm keen to support you financially as much as possible. Which is better monetarily for you? If I watch on pod YouTube or I listen via a podcast app. Well, that is very kind of you. I would say don't worry about that at all. Just watch it or listen to things as much the way that best suits you. Um, obviously, you know, we have the advert. So if you don't skip an advert and you watch an advert, then that will help us. But personally, I'm skipping all the way because I really hate adverts. So I don't blame you if you do the same. Uh, on the website, will be cleveryourcash.com. Some of our links are affiliate links. Now, it's really important to me. Set this up ten more than 10 years ago, I set up the website. And the whole way through this, it's always been really vital to me that any affiliate link we get, which is basically if you click on a link and make a purchase, we get commission does not lead our editorial if we've got an affiliate link and it fits in what we're telling you is the best for all the readers or the viewers or listeners whoever it might be then great right because it's going to benefit you because you're getting the best deal and it benefit us because we get the, the uh some hopefully some kind of commission but if we don't if the top thing and you look at our savings accounts the bank switching deals make no money of that because we're not regulated by the fca um still write about it i still tell you about it it's thing i tell you about more than anything so don't worry about that but it's very kind of you to, to say so uh, andrew says hi andrew Looking for your thoughts. After Monzo did its big upgrade a few months ago and with the induction of cashback, do you think Monzo is better uh, or Starling now? This is a, this is a, a, a tough one. Uh, in the team, we've got a team now. Um, Zoe has written a couple of sort of in-depth reviews of Monzo and Starling, but also Chase and crew. And we'll be working through, so we've got a good library over there and I'll try and bring them to, uh, to the YouTube channel as well. Um, you know, we have... And I kind of involved quite involved in in those processes as well, and deciding what we actually say as a as a publication, as a channel, kind of what we think where. And it is really close. Starling still edges it for me, um, but I do really like the Monzo overhaul. I think it's quite intuitive and quite simple and quite clear. The cashback is okay. It's easier to use from that form than you get in other banks that offer this kind of cashback. And for those of you who don't know, this is the kind of thing where it's the offers change every couple of weeks and it might be 10% off LNER, 3% back on eBay, what those kind of things. But then next week it could be, I don't know, Franco Manca or some shop you've literally never heard of or never visited. Um, but you have to activate these offers. So it's easier to do that in Monzo compared to other banks and Starling doesn't have that feature. So that does give Monzo uh, a nice perk there. I think ultimately it's going to come down to... Uh, personal preference if you've never used either try them both out if you've only used one maybe look at the other one there's a soft credit check as long as you don't apply for an overdraft there's very rarely any kind of incentive monzo 
If you've got a mate with an account, they might be able to refer a friend and give you a five and they get five for each. Um, but yeah, I think it is down to, to personal preference there. I think if I was starting off, obviously I've got Starling as my main bank now. Would I give, I might, I might be tempted to give, to sort of go with Monzo, but I'm not going to move things across because I think it's relatively, uh, yeah, there's not enough for me to, to move across. But also you can't discount Chase as well because Chase has that 1% cash back on spending, which is really good. Another sort of really good features. Uh, so a lot of it is going to come down to, I think, personal preference. Um, Adam says, oh, another Monzo question. I've recently switched to Monzo, but now I have hear all sorts of stories where people have had their accounts frozen. Should I be worried? Would you advise against moving accounts again? Uh, so the Monzo account cancelling thing, I've not heard about this for a long time now. It was a much bigger issue a few years ago. It could well be something that uh, is still going on. And this was basically around uh, anti-fraud measures and checks that they were doing as a bank. And as a digital bank, and the same could be said of Starling and some of those others, they've got better technology and better systems in place to look at things which they think are a bit dodgy and maybe flag them as something that's gone wrong. Now, that does not mean they are doing it better or worse than the other banks who maybe aren't doing this as much, but they are still doing, they're all doing this process. They legally have to be looking for stuff which they think is someone who is money laundering. And that's often where it happens. But you see all these stories, a huge number of stories from people, and it's not just Monzo, my knees had a loss of this and there were other banks as well, where that's no uh, great comfort, is there, when your money is locked away. Now, I, most people, normal banking, this shouldn't be a problem, but it is something, it is a fair point to say, do a bit more research on it, do due diligence to that. There was a whole huge Facebook group about people who had, had that this happen to them with Monzo. Um, but other banks do it, big high street banks do this as well. So uh, it might be something to bear in mind if you're choosing between the banks. And from what I just said about Monzo versus Starling, could happen with Starling, but maybe you think, oh, okay, I'll, I'll stick with, with Starling instead. But again, it's, I don't know how much of an issue it is right now. So it's something to, to look into a bit more, absolutely. So as I said, guys, I'm only gonna do one question at a time from the, uh, the first question I see from you at the moment. Um, Richard says, are there any tax benefits given to charity for a 40% taxpayer, i.e. can you reduce your tax liability? So I'm not an accountant, um, but I believe that the, uh, absolutely there are benefits because there are a number of things you can do which can reduce effect, your effective tax rate. Um, so paying more into your pension, I think giving to charity can do the same thing as well. It's all about effectively what tax you were paid because obviously uh, you can do uh, gift aid on tax. So you can reduce how much that would have contributed and that brings things down. Pension contributions, again, that brings things down. And that can help things uh, such as your child benefit. Uh, I know a lot of people, if they can, they put more into their pension to to work that effectively reduce what their income is so they get more of child benefit or qualify it full stop. And uh, this is obviously before the new rules come into play uh, in the next over the next few years. Uh, and also you could also potentially be a personal savings allowance as well if you're a higher rate taxpayer. Those extra contributions you put in could well bring you down. Uh, again, I'm not an accountant though, so you'd have to be, you know, you can, I would I would talk to someone uh, just to ensure that they are, you're actually doing this will actually work when you do your tax return. Obviously, we haven't got many days left to do this for this financial year and Easter's in the way. So you've got to, and there is a very busy period for obviously accountants and financial advisors. So you might struggle to get that information. I've certainly looked into this myself online. I haven't found a huge wealth of information there. And it's something that's on the list for me to kind of uh, do a deep dive into at some point. Uh, Adam says, uh, why is it the case that help to buy and lifetime ISAs don't follow the market leading rates for other ISAs and savings accounts, especially the help to buy? So help to buy, I mean, there's no, they're closed for new applicants now. They're just existing ones. There's no competition. There's no reason for the different building societies and banks to up the, one up each other with different rates. Uh, so that's why those rates probably aren't that amazing because they're just basically legacy products for people who are still saving in them and there's a deadline coming along at some point where you've got to use them. Lifetime ISAs, again, not many people offer them. There's literally, for a cash lifetime ISA, six, seven, eight different providers who will actually offer a cash lifetime ISA. And you think about how many different people out there could offer it. So again, there's not really the competition to do much, much higher at the top. Saying that though, we have seen recently a bit of a battle right at the top between two brands, Moneybox and Tembo. Tembo used to be called Nude, but they got bought out by this mortgage broker called uh, Tembo. And they're offering, I think, it's over at becleveryourcash.com forward slash savings or on our separate ISA page at least. I think Moneybox is 4.4 and Tembo is 4.3, but Moneybox has a bonus for one year, which means after 12 months, it absolutely will drop down a lot. So probably Tembo, even though it's second on the list, is probably the better option to go for in terms of maybe transferring or opening up a new ISA this financial year or next financial year for a cash lifetime ISA. Remember, you have to be under 40 
to uh, start into a lifetime ISA, uh, open one up. But if you can contribute until you're 50, not sure whether they will let you open up new ones to be able to continue. It can be a bit complicated there as over 40 year olds, if you're stuck with what we've got or whether you can open them up. So have a look at that information, see if you have any joy there. Right, we've got 10 minutes left, guys. Let's race through, see what else we've got going. Well, one thing I do want to say to you guys um, is if you haven't already, I would really, really appreciate it if you would fill in the annual survey. Uh, be clever with your cash.com forward slash survey is the URL. It'll take you through, it'll take you two or three minutes, but I really, really would appreciate it. And it really would inform, uh, it does help inform the kind of content decisions that myself and now the team will be making over the next year. The kind of things that you really like that you want us to keep doing, the things that you think we could cover, the different things you'd love to sort of find, have help with and generally uh, letting us know how we've helped you in the past. We'd really, really appreciate that. And if you do this, the deadline for this is Sunday, by the way. If you put your email address in, uh, then you will be entered into a prize draw to win a £100 voucher as well. Uh, so love it if you if haven't already, really appreciate that. Be clever with your cash.com forward slash survey. So uh, over on Insta, uh, Jason said, okay, uh, can I save into a lifetime ISA and a lifetime cash ISA and a cash ISA in the same financial year? So let's talk about it now in terms of next week for this financial year. At the moment, you can only save into one cash ISA and one lifetime ISA. Now that lifetime ISA can be a cash ISA or a stocks and shares ISA. It can't be um, one of each. It's one of one cash or one lifetime ISA, but that is fine because that does not count as a cash ISA. So that's separate. So yes, you absolutely can have a cash ISA and a cash lifetime ISA. You can have a stocks and shares ISA and a cash lifetime ISA or any sort of combination you want of those. That's fine. Now the rules that say early on, they are changing from uh, the new financial year and the video and article that comes out on Sunday will explain to you exactly how those new rules are. So make sure you do check that out. Um, got a lot of lifetime ISA questions going on here. So uh, Zoom says, I heard you can get £1,000 if you contribute £4,000 to an ISA for first time buyers. Is it worth it? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to direct you to uh, another video on the YouTube channel. I did it a couple of years ago, but it's all absolutely still the same apart from the right at the end I talk about the top paying account. That's obviously changed, but you can find that information elsewhere on the site and the channel. Is But what basically lifetime ISA is explained. Watch that. That will take you through everything you need to know. Or if you'd rather read it, Again, be cleveryourcash.com. Just type lifetime ISA into the search box and you'll find the article there. That will cover everything you need to know. Um, Ty Billy Boy says, are you too old at the age of 68 to take out an investment ISA? Uh, no, you have to be over 18, but there shouldn't be any age prevention, a, 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 an ultimate sort of higher age to stop you doing that at all. So you'll be absolutely fine. I mean, obviously every provider, some providers might have their own rules, but, but there isn't uh, any kind of legislation around saying you can't do that. Um... Lewis says, what are your thoughts on super payments? I don't know what a super payment is, uh, Lewis. So sorry about that one. I'm, I won't be able to answer that. Apologies for that. Um, Emmanuel says, can I open cash ISA now and put a lump sum of 15K on it before the deadline? Will I still get the interest on it even though I've only opened it up now? So the way interest works is you only earn that rate of interest for the duration of time the money is in the account. So if you open up an account now, and it rated, say, let's say 5% AER, annual equivalent rate. That's what it means. Your annual AER, basically, annual equivalent rate means if you had the money in account for a year, this is what you would earn on your money. There's something else called gross, which is basically without that. But um, the rates we want to look at, AER. Now, let's assume you put 15K into an ISA now and it was paying 5%. And let's assume that rate doesn't change, whether it's fixed or the variable rate doesn't change, whatever it is, you will get in 12 months' time or depends how when when it's paid it could be paid daily weekly monthly or annually depending on the account you will get five percent interest on that now if you put 15 grand in and it's a five percent rate now but then uh in a week's time it drops to one percent this won't happen but let's say it did then obviously you wouldn't get five percent you'd get well five percent just for those first few days so you'd have to like factor that in divide it by 365 and divide it by the number of days you earned it for and then you'd get the lower rate going on so that's how that kind of works. Obviously, if you really want to secure a particular rate, then you want to lock it in at a fixed rate. The problem with that is it's harder to access it. Now, in a non-ISA account, you can't access that money. In a fixed ISA, you are able to access it with a penalty. And let's say it's a one-year fix. Normally, it's like 30 days interest penalty. If it's two-year fix, 60. It will vary by provider and so on. So that will give you a little bit more flexibility if you want to. If you're not, if you think you don't need it, but you're worried you might be able to, but you want to get in a higher rate, so for higher rate, potentially higher rate, uh, then that is something that you can look at. 
Uh, Mark, I'd love your video, extremely useful. Uh, that's really nice, nice of you, Mark. Thank you so much, really appreciate that. Um, Karim says, have you heard of a lot of people receiving multiple rewards from bank switches? For example, NatWest, Ulster and RBS. Is there a hack around reapplying for switches by applying for a different account type? So uh, it's worth knowing uh, that the NatWest, RBS and Ulster switches are going to end on Tuesday, the 2nd of April. That's your last chance to open the account and apply for the switch. So if you haven't done it at all and you're eligible, again, there is a separate video on the NatWest switch and separate individual articles about NatWest, RBS and Ulster because the Ulster application process is a little bit more complicated at becleveryourcash.com. So it's worth knowing that. Now, in terms of workarounds, the terms and conditions are quite clear. If you have had a switching bonus from any of those three banks, can't remember what the cutoff date was. Uh, can't remember what it was now. 2018, I want to say, October 2018. Again, it's all in the articles. Uh, you will not get a bonus this time. Now, last year, when those offers ran, people were able to get all three of them, all three offers, even though this is the company who said they couldn't. Uh, and some people have said this time they have. But in our Facebook group, a lot more people have been sharing how they haven't been able to get bonuses at all, let's alone for the second time. And there is obviously, you can risk it, you can chance it. You say, do you know what? I've already got the money on one of them. I'll try for them on the others. Or you got them last year or try again this year. There is obviously a risk that the banks could see this as you abusing the system. And it's within their rights if they do this to close your account down. So you really got to weigh up uh, what other benefits you might get from those accounts, not just now, but in the future, if you want to go down that route. Personally, I wouldn't do that this time. I wouldn't push it. You know, for example, like uh, Santander, I had the money in the past. I'm not eligible. I'm not trying for this new offer. Lloyd's, which closes today, by the way, if you still might be able to do it sometimes because the website is easy, they might have taken it off the website already. But again, I've had the money in the past. I'm not going to risk it because I use those accounts uh, for other things. I don't want the, the chance that happening. So broadly speaking, I think that there's enough money out there. Don't try and game it unless there's a huge amount of evidence out there that it's actually fine. Uh, okay, Ali says, would it be best to wait until the next financial year to open an ISA or would it be better to open one now before the next financial year? So Ali, it depends how much money you've got to put aside. Remember that there is an annual cap on, and I've got a whole video and article about ISA allowances for 2024, 2025. So this will explain more. So I'll give you the headlines. You get 20,000 pounds allowance. That's the most you can add in a new financial year. It doesn't matter about previous years, they can stay in there, that's fine, but the new year. And then it resets on April the 6th. So if you don't use it, you lose it. It starts going back to zero for new contributions. It does not affect anything already in there. Now, if you have more than 20K that you want to put into ISAs, then you absolutely want to put some in this year so you can put more in next year or the lifetime ISA with its own £4,000 limit up to £4,000 this year, then you can put another £4,000 in for the new financial year. If you do not have a huge amount of cash, it doesn't really make a difference. You know, if you've only got a thousand pounds to put into an ISA, and then you've got the question is, do you need an ISA over other savings accounts? It doesn't really make much difference unless you are anticipating a huge windfall that's going to come in the next financial year that you would want to get that kind of tax protection in from an ISA. Uh, Free to Will says, do you think Chase UK will offer additional products such as ISAs and credit cards in the future? They've definitely said that they are going to uh, do a credit card at some point, but they've talked about that for a long time. And I wouldn't be surprised if they also do other savings options and loans and things like that. Uh, but at the moment, uh, there's nothing else going on there. So how are we doing? Two minutes. Let's go back to Instagram. Uh, remember, guys, be clever with your cash.com forward slash community is where you can ask your questions. If we don't get through to them today, and be clever your cash.com forward slash newsletter is where you can subscribe to uh, every Thursday, the best of everything we're doing across all the different channels. So you can kind of keep on top of things uh, and, you know, in increase your kind of knowledge as things go along. Um, already done one from Josh. Um, Jitu says, uh, question, can you swap one ISA to another? This is known as an ISA transfer. This is really important, okay? And again, when was it? Last week or the week before? Video and article, ISA transfers explained. Well, that will take you through exactly what you need to do there because you should not just withdraw money and put it in someone. You have to do something called a transfer. Uh, so do check that one out. Um, the Carpathian Spartan says, please don't manage to tell you that one. Um, if I did a switch with NatWest, can I make as well a switch with Royal Bank of Scotland? They are from the same group. So as I mentioned just now, terms and conditions say no. People in the group have done it and tried it and some have been successful, some haven't. I personally think maybe it's not worth the risk right now because I think they are cracking down uh, much more on this right now. Um, and what else we've got going on here? So we've got time for a couple more questions. So Josh, I'm already asked one of Josh's questions, but it's the first one I can see here. Uh, if, is the Santander Edge up better than the Edge if you live in London because the higher rent you'll get the full £15 cash back on rent? You do not earn cash back on rent with uh, the uh, any of the Santander cash back accounts. So that is completely irrelevant. Again, was it this week? 
like yeah just a few days ago there was a comparison about those different ones and an article as well and it details in that exactly what the rates of cashback are on exactly what products including the caps uh, generally i don't think the edge up is right for anyone i can't see where that benefits anyone at all over using the edge and other options out there um i think that might be all i've got time for let me just check uh francis says what's the best fixed isa rate for the new uh allowance of 2024 2025 i will be doing if not next week the week after basically at the start of the financial year i will do a new video and a new summary article at becleveryourcash.com with the pics of the offers for new ices when that new financial year starts don't forget we also have becleveryourcash.com forward slash savings those daily updates obviously easter weekend it's not going to be updated over the weekend and we will be when the new financial year starts as well and before that of the top paying accounts if you want to see what the ones are right now then i've just updated that just in the last uh well last hour just before doing this right guys i think that's sadly uh, all i've got time for apologies if i didn't get through to all of your questions um lots from the same person there so i won't do that i think i might have to call it a day now uh thank you so much guys really 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 do appreciate it i uh, have a lovely long weekend whatever you're doing and we'll do another one of these in a couple of weeks all right guys cheers